Man, oh, African-inspired moves there. Nice job, Ryle. Okay, flexible hips, mm. working on them. Uh, of course, we are celebrating Africa Month, and just as Africa is rich and diverse in culture, today's recipe is equally as rich and deep in flavor. Uh, made using a simple set of standard ingredients, Chef Clem's African-inspired spicy peanut soup is a surefire way to keep you warm. And it gets straight to the heart, mm. right from the motherland. It's packed full of protein, fresh produce, and it'll be ready to devour in less than an hour. Yes. Yeah. Grab your spoons, all right? Food is being served in the kitchen. Food is being cooking. served. I'm loving this idea, yeah. the presentation. I it's, mean, this is, oh, wow. Yeah, it's rich. Whoa. And it, like you said, it, it feeds your soul. Mm. So I spoke to Patrick yesterday. Patrick and I, tight friends, we really yeah, cool. Yeah. He was telling me about this in Goosey Soup. But I was like, where do I find all these ingredients? So he said, after the lockdown, we're going to get back in the kitchen together. He's going to actually come and cook with us. We're going to make that in Goosey Soup. So then we spoke about some other soups. One of the soups you mentioned was like a peanut spicy soup. Ooh. And like you said, you know, Patrick's, he's the man swole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. talk about the protein. It comes from, from the peanuts. I mean, so he, this is Patrick approved soup today. So let's get right to it, because yeah. I'm very keen to try this out at home. Okay. Especially because it involves kale, and I've never really known how to use kale properly. So here we go. This one's quite cool. I mean, um, because you cook your kale down, you, if you want it quite soft, 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 yes. cook it a little longer. Ah. But I like cooking it just with still has a little bit of texture, a yeah. little bit of chew to it. But yeah, um, kale is amazing. It's so good for you. Any leafy green, you know, it's doing its job. Yes, yeah. man. Yes. So okay, so onions. You got some red onions in. Red there, onion. No? You can use white onion because we're gonna kind of cook it down nice and low and slow. Cook out the sugars in there so it caramelizes. Mm, 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 mm. To that, ginger and garlic. Now, here's the thing about the ginger. I say add as much ginger as you can tolerate to this recipe. Okay. I, like some people can't handle a lot of ginger. Mm, mm. I love the ginger. I think it's the thing about the way that the ginger interacts with the hot sauce and the peanuts. It and makes really? it so like fragrant and delicious. Okay. And so okay. You definitely, if you can, go a lot of ginger. Okay, good. Garlic is a must. That's also, always in there. Also, just amazing for you in general, um, anti-inflammatory and all those good things. Yeah. So especially this season, you know, the flu mm -hmm. season. Um, this is uh, something you want to get into your body to uh, help your body. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Because, and it's also it's gotten so cold so quickly. Listen, okay. like literally overnight, yeah. temperatures have just plunged. Boom. So we, we um, legit, my heart, like Sutherland, again, hi. For real, guys, I was so, uh, okay. Africa <laughs> month, you know what, I feel Oof. bad. I feel bad as a South African. I've never traveled to Sutherland in the Northern Cape. So when lockdowns are like, like it's done, yeah. we start traveling. Yeah. Sutherland, yeah. book me up. I want to yeah, come visit, Sutherland. but I want to be there. One of the camera guys was telling me Sutherland's mountains right now. Snow. Oh my god. Snow. Listen, if you've got any pictures of it, please yeah. send it to us uh, on our uh, Facebook page. Absolutely. We'd love to, to see what's going on in Southern. And man, I really hope you're finding a way of keeping warm. Yeah. Even if it's just cooking a, a beautiful recipe like uh -huh. this and um, staying warm at home. I, I can't stand getting cold, eh? I love the cold. I'm one, no, uh, no, Clem, we cook. are not friends. It makes me want to cook when it's cold. I'm just like, oh. come, let me feed you. I become so miserable when it's cold, eh? Do oh. you? Just mornings are horrible. Everything is horrible. I'd... Ah! Because I'm mutatere, but you know, like, got very little between the, the, the skin and... I came know. prepared. <laughs> I can't prepare. <laughs> I'm ready for winter. Uh, I'm ready. So I, I forgot all of that in the womb, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to cook the garlic and ginger until it's nice and fragrant and it's nice and soft. To that, we're going to add some tomato puree. So it's yes. got a lacquer base. We talk about this all the time. If we're using tomato in a recipe, we spoke about it actually in previous segment. Yeah, yeah. Using tomato in a recipe, it's going to taste delicious tomorrow. Ah, uh, so yes. I love about this recipe. The so when you do make the simple. soup, make sure you make a big batch of it. Okay. Absolutely. Good. So Listen, thing, while you're doing that, What's the secret to, because uh, like Monique made um, spaghetti bolognese yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then she's like, it's too, it's too sweet, it's too acidic. I don't know what the flavor profile, that umami. Yeah. To get the, the best flavor out of tomato, what's the, the best yeah. way of doing it? The best way is, remember, tomato's got a very high percentage of water in it. And mm -hmm. water dilutes flavor. Mm -hmm. So if you can, like a tomato puree, where basically what they've done is they've removed some of that water. They've either like put it in an oven, like low temperature, let it dehydrate, intensify yeah. the tomato flavor. So bolognese or ragu, based on that principle, mm. if you want a very rich, intense, umami-filled bolognese, yeah. what I do is I start the cooking process on the stove and put it in the oven. Let all that excess moisture evaporate. Let it get thick and delicious. This is how we talk about food. Mm. Get it super deep and intense. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a good bolognese. That's Love a good it. bolognese. Okay. All right. Okay. Look at it. 
Oh, yes, we're supposed to be cooking. Okay, tomato, <laughs> tomato puree is in there. And what I like about it is I actually use quite a bit of olive oil in the beginning mm -hmm. because um, I like rendering out the tomato flavors in the oil. We spoke about oil carries flavor really well, yeah. which is good because I'm using hot sauce. From you your can bag. Use, yeah, this is, straight, this is my second supply, other side. This is really great. You can use spices, but I like the fact that the sauce has got all the flavor in there already. Mm -hmm. So it had time to develop. Good so we're stuff. adding your hot sauce in. This is a habanero sauce. Oh, okay, hey, but, but hey, this, oh, hey. Okay. Hey, okay. what are you trying to do? I mean. It's, it's okay. It's gonna take, it's gonna spend quite a bit of time cooking, so it's gonna level out. I mean, just, you know, it's okay, that's, that's fine. That's enough. Go. Okay. <laughs> And also, we're gonna add some peanut butter to it. Peanut butter also mellows out that heat that's in there. Okay. And I feel like we don't use peanut butter in, in savory food like as much as we should. Okay. Peanut butter in savory food, I think, is amazing. I mean, the Thai food, they do, they do so well by adding peanut butter to it. But then I go and find out in Africa, we've been using peanuts in our savory dishes for like thousands and thousands of years. I, when so I'm bring it home. We're gonna start using okay. peanuts and peanut butter in our savory food. And I like adding it. This is a no sugar, no salt peanut butter you get at Willie's. Uh -huh. so as, as natural as it comes. Yeah. Exactly, and you can regulate how much sugar, how much salt you want to add to this. Awesome. Because we're using tomato puree, you spoke about the acidity that was in there. Mm -hmm. You could add a little bit of sugar just to balance out that acidity that you get from the tomato. Okay, so the sugar does that. Okay, yeah. balances it out. Mix that through, and already it's like it's smelling so intense and so delicious. If you wanted to make this a creamy soup, you could add some coconut milk right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, how good, close is good, this to like good. a Thai inspired soup? And this getting is good. Africa. It's getting This there. is so delicious. Well, we're okay. cross pollinating the, the recipes like we did it. earlier. I love it. Awesome. But also, if you think about like how much we spoke about spice. We always talk about spice. Spice is amazing. How many spices come from Africa? Mm. And we think it's from like another country, but actually it's all from from Africa. Talk Taken about the spice from, yeah, trade. Exported. Wom Yan from the Ribic who came here and like got all these spices. <laughs> like we just share the flavor, share the love, and I love that about Africa in general. Which like oh. just one big beautiful delicious. What just went in there? Oh yes, I'm supposed to be cooking while I'm talking. <laughs> History lesson here, let's History get back lesson. to the cooking. So I'm, use, I'm keeping it vegetarian, so I'm using a veggie stock. You okay. can by all means use a chicken stock. Okay. You can also make this a, a, a meaty dish by adding some chicken in there. Okay. I like the idea that you can roast some chicken and use some leftover, whatever you have leftover. Mm -hmm. You can have leftover chicken in our house. But however, if you do have some, some chicken in there will be absolutely amazing. Okay, cool. So in, then, in, in without with kale. kale. Kale is really great for this dish because it adds a lot of texture. Everything's quite smooth in there right now. Mm -hmm. The kale adds a nice crunch to it. You could also, like I said, cook it down completely until it's super, super, super soft. Yeah. I like a little bit of crunch with it. Mm -hmm. And then obviously it retains more nutrients by keeping it a little crunchy. Kale so, and spinach maybe. I, I, I love me some spinach. You could use spinach. Um, you could totally hard. use any hardy green leaf in this dish. Obviously, Africa, we've got so many different varieties of, of like hardy green leaves. Mm -hmm. Hoy those in there, absolutely. The more, the merrier. So that's yeah. going in. This is health going into it's the pot. It's so good for you, it's so good for you. So what you want to do is, after this like simmers for about half an hour, if you want, simmer it for two hours, nice and low and slow, intensify those flavors, put it in a bowl and then some peanuts. There we go. Simply just toast them in a pan a little bit. Matonko man. And just because you want people to know it's a peanut and chili oh. soup. Oh, muditle. Here he goes it's again with his hot sauce. I'll just do the one. Yeah, yeah please. Just Since do the one. Much. Patrick approved. Patrick, my friend. Oh I want you to try. my good. Patrick can handle it. He, he, he's good. He's good. <laughs> this is after there's so much chili sauce in the. Oh my word. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so that's for Patrick. Kat, that's you. This is a good soup, friends. This try looks it. absolutely incredible. And do try it out at home to warm up your soul from the inside out. Check mm. out the recipe on our website, expressoshow.com. Thanks, Chef. And it's out.